And a very good afternoon to all our pool fans joining us. We're here at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino. CSI presents the Predator WPA Men's World 10 Ball Championships. And front and center, Martin Daig just going into his chair. He lost the lag up against SVB. I'm Jim White, very happy to be joined by Margaret Fefalova Steyer. And, Hi, Jim. Uh, How Margaret, are you? welcome, welcome. We've got a great match on store here for today. Absolutely. It's going to be exciting. It's always exciting to watch Shane. And, you know, if you're witnessing the, the match from here from the casino you can actually see how many people are present yeah, right now he, because he, he always draws a huge he packs crowd. them in doesn't he and uh, yeah. they really don't have enough seats for when uh, shane van boning <laughs> takes center stage and 10 down off the break so wpa rules and i got caught up in this actually the very first day where someone had made the 10 i think off the six and i thought it was a rack win not so there's no early tens it was actually a funny situation yesterday when Alex Pagulain was playing on the TV table. That's what you yeah. were talking about. Well, that was Alex got caught up the same as yeah. me, and I was commentating that match. So and he, he was uh, laughing. Just like me, he didn't know either. Didn't matter. He, two God. shots later, he won yeah. the match. So. Yeah, thank God that he had a shot on the one after they spot the two ball, uh, the nine ball. Boy, this is a great start from Shane, though. Just exactly what he would have wanted. And uh, just because you don't know Martin Degg, French-Canadian opponent, sat in his chair right now. These two have played before, and believe it or not, Martin has actually beaten Shane before. Really? I didn't know that. So uh, last time they played up in Canada, it was an event, 11-10 he beat Shane. Wow, I bet Shane is hungry for the range. Well, I guarantee you, <laughs> you don't forget losses. Oh, never. It looks like a good start for Shane. The most challenging part would be probably to get from six to the seven, and then everything is quite easy from there. You got a good angle so he can just draw back two rails for the seven. For those of you at home that may not know, Margaret, she's quite a player in her own right, so uh, more than capable of letting you know what these guys should be doing. Whether they do it or not might be another <laughs> story. But Yeah, definitely. It's hard to make a call sometimes you know because there are so many ways of playing the table and very true margaret very true as always players sometimes see it a little differently but and also our camera angle doesn't show 100 percent you know how the players see it and to take it in consideration shane puts in a lot of time when he's in town here he plays at griff's and that one front table, you almost see him parking there all day long practicing. If there's anyone that practices more than Van Boning, I don't know them. Yeah, I think the two guys who are always there in the front tables are Shane and Tyler Steyer. They're always at Griffs, always practicing, <laughs> playing matches against each other. Well, he opens his account, securing the first rack. And that's one quick way to stamp your authority on a match that many expect him to progress through. He had a little bit of a, a scare in his first round, though. Oh, yeah, he was Dan down, right? Yeah, he was. Daniel Gutenberger. He ended up winning the match 8 6, but he was down almost throughout the match. And then. I think the last time I saw, he was down like 6 to 3, I believe. He sprinted home in the end, and uh, when he was put under pressure. He produced the goods, as he has done so often in his career. He'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer, and arguably the best American player that's ever lived. Just depends who you act, I guess, or who you ask, I guess. Absolutely, but yeah, it is very he's hard make, to argue with that. He's making a stake to that claim, for sure. It was great to see him win in the World Championship final last year. It was huge because the guy won so much, but he still didn't have this world title, but now he is, it is complete. Seems like a dry break for Shane here. And now we're going to see Martin for the first time in action here. First chance, see Martin Daig. Long trip down from the 
icy cold climate that is northern Quebec, near Quebec City, is where he calls home. So many people watching, look at that. And he's got a lot of experience too. He's been playing the game, owns his own business back home. So okay. he's not a full-time player. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't play, right? Well, he's competitive, Margaret. Rest assured, they all are in Quebec. I believe so. You know, even if you have, if you own your own business, you got to be competitive in business too. So he didn't come here to shop. Absolutely. Unlike <laughs> unlike my daughters. <laughs> It looks like he's hooked behind the eight. He's looking at it. Yeah, he's going to elevate and try to spur the cue ball. It didn't leave much for Shane. Yeah, that was an unforced error really from Martin Daig there. He just overdrew the white and got it behind the eight, so. Yeah, the one ball was pretty tough. I feel like you misjudged the table a little bit. You know, when, when you play draw shot and then you cloth, it just grabs so much. So it's easy to overdraw the position. Uh, quickly calling for his extension. He wants to think about this just a little longer. Yeah, we do have a 30 second shot clock here on the TV table. And both players have one extension per rack. And after the break, players have 60 seconds to think about the position of the table. Just left the edge of this too, enough really to be able to try and snick it into the right hand side, but no positional rewards. Yeah, it looks like he can see the edge of the two. I'm not quite sure if he can make it. We'll find out in a second. It's actually really exciting to do commentary, you know, like to be on the other side of it. <laughs> I remember myself playing on the TV table like a couple of days ago for the Las Vegas Open Women's event. And it's just a completely different experience to be on the other side of this whole setup. It was a great call, by the way, Jim. Well, he had enough to be able to see it into the side. Yeah. He tried to make it in the side, but again, there was... You, in shots like this, you almost have to rely on luck to get like a good bump, you know, with certain balls. And now with him fluking the nine there, if Shane didn't like this shot, he could have brought Martin back. Looks like he's going to hook him behind the eight ball. I think he hit a little bit too full. I think he left the shot for him. But once again, there is nothing much he can do position-wise. Yes, he can make the two, but then what after that? Bottom left as we look. Well, I'll tell you one thing with Martin Daig too, if you haven't already noticed, he's pretty animated. He doesn't hide his emotions and you see him trying to will that cue ball past the five and uh, this time it didn't listen. One rail kick and needs to be a little lucky. Wow, he hit it very firm. Left the three ball open for Shane. One thing about it too, Margaret, and you know that when you come into a match and you're a big underdog, and Martin is a big underdog in this match. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is let the favorite get away on you early. 
100%. Just get him, you know, make him get comfortable with the table, with the setup and everything. The first few racks are so important. Well, this is looking a lot like 2-0 to Van Boning early. Just what Martin Degg didn't want. Yeah, he hit an unforced error, unfortunately, on the one ball, right, in the first track when he overdrew the position. And now this tough kick shot on the three. Um, I can't say he did much wrong. You know, it was just tough layout. He had to go for a very difficult two ball and then hook himself on the three. What I always find intimidating with Shane Van Boning too is just how calm he is around the table. It's almost like it's a stroll in the park for him. And you're out there sweating bullets and <laughs> he looks like he's walking his dog. Yeah, that's one thing about you know so many pros. They have the same thing in common. I feel like they have so many hours of experience at the table. And this layouts are and he's taken and the first two racks, so he's he's doing exactly what he wanted to do. Yeah. Raise the bar. Yeah, now he's just gonna focus on one ball at a time and extend the lead slowly. We'll see, we still haven't seen a lot of Martin, but I hope to see some good pull today from him. So is he. <laughs> yeah, I bet. You know, I have to admit it, it might be very intimidating to play in front of such a big crowd knowing that all of them are rooting for Shane. Yeah, good it's, point too, Margaret. Yeah, very partisan so crowd, so. Shane just having a look around the arena. There's three convention rooms here, massive size. Over 300 pool tables, the BCA leagues are all taking part. And what a beautiful environment this is for all these amateur players from all around North America to make their way to Las Vegas. You know, see a lot of players they only ever see on television, only ever read about, chance to chat with them, meet them, get their photos taken. Yeah, I believe they have over 7,000 players here combined. It's, it's unbelievable. Like every time I walk in, it's so many people, so many tables constant action and what I love about this setup is that the amateur side is uh, alongside with the pros so they constantly keep watching them you know support us it's actually pretty amazing yeah it's the grassroots of the game yeah another dry break from bad boning and in the end of the day you can't really grow the sport without the fans so I like what CSI is doing how they like Every event that they organize, they have pros and amateurs play in the same building, right, or in the same room. So then they grow the fan base for the professional sport. It's pretty amazing. Bank shot here, should drop on the two if he gets it. But he hit it pretty firm, it looks like he has. No, he opted well, against it. Yeah. And very good go containing shot though. Very nice shot. Yeah, in uh, you know, in the safeties like this, you really don't have to worry much about the one ball. All you have to do is to control the cue ball because if the cue ball is behind the two, it really doesn't matter where the one ball is going to end up. Let's see the jump shot from Shane. Oh, well, this. Uh, chance for Martin to again loosen up that back arm. Miscue from Shane. But this is not the easiest layout. No, it's far from being easy. I mean, the key shot would be really to get from the five to the six, because after that, you can see it's laying pretty easy. Just connecting the dots till then. Oh yeah, he didn't really want it to get on this side for the three. Now he made it a little bit more complicated for himself. Ooh. 
Here's a cue shot. Just got to make sure and clear that eight. It's a pretty big zone to get to the five. You know, it's all about how would he prefer <coughs> to go from the five to the six. Would he stun it across two rails or would he decide to go three rails with a top inside spin? There's a few different variables. It really depends of the angle that you leave for the five ball. Smart shot. What do you think? Do you think no, he's going to draw it back? I think he has to. I think this is the big shot in the rack right here. If mm -hmm. he can knock this in and land on the six, he'll have done all the hard work. Yeah, absolutely. See, like, um, I really don't like to go three rails with the inside here because of the slick table. The spin just doesn't grab that good. Look, looks like he's in trouble. Well, not really. Look at this. He has a window, a perfect window between eight and the seven. The referee came over to have a quick look at it. Mm -hmm. Stun one rail. Go back to the seven. Oh, this is just the sort of reply that Martin Daig was looking for. Yeah, but it's still not easy. This kind of balls are tough. He made it perfectly. Now it does look like all the hard work is done. Just gonna make sure to stay calm and composed. You know how common it is when you do the hard work and then you miss the easy ball in the end because you feel like you did the job already and you lose the concentration. So it's very important to reset yourself and just, you know, Keep focusing on your fundamentals and things that you have to focus on in order to make the ball and finish up the rack. Well, if the crowd wasn't sure that Mark Van Degg could play, they know he can now. Secures his first rack, 2-1 to Van Boning. But Degg with the break in rack number four. And we'll be back short one minute break. A very warm welcome back. It is the Predator Men's World 10 Ball Championship, WPA World 10 Ball Championship. And we are at the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino. And CSI has teamed up with Predator to bring you one of the best events you're gonna see. Any world title event carries a lot of grain and for that very reason, it's attracted 128 of the best players around the world here to Las Vegas. Really nice break. I really like his execution. Like, you know, you notice how he went through the cue ball on the break. Really put a lot of power into it. And finally poised right now, Van Boning and Dig from Quebec City in Canada been a well-known player in Canada for many years. A little more traveled than a lot of the players from that province. Uh-oh. Yeah, I was just about to say that if he managed 
this first few balls, it's going to look like he can level the score and make it 2-2. But looks like he gave another chance for Shane to extend the lead. Here you can see his body language, he's a little disappointed. That was a friendly kiss. Yeah, not too bad at all. This is the only pocket that really could have welcomed the three. And Shane has gotten onto it with a little love from the five. <laughs> yeah, look at this. You know, they all say that, of course, hard work and, uh, you know, playing well. It's very important, but sometimes you do need a little bit of luck. Well, he could easily drop below the five and play the five into the top left corner, but I don't know, the way that he was looking at that almost tells me he doesn't he, fancy that shot. Do you think he's going to try to draw all the way back? Mm. And I think the fact that it was frozen on the rail dictated exactly what yeah. Shane he had a good angle. To do. Yeah. He, he had a good angle, and if he were to bump the five a little bit fuller, he could play it in the side or the opposite corner. But he still should be fine. Just to remind you again, this is a winner's side matchup. The format of this year's event, race to eight. And when you get to the last 32, comes race to 10. Oh, that was an unexpected miss from Shane. He didn't really leave much for Martin, but yeah, you can see he's disappointed. It wasn't an easy ball, but he hit it pretty thick. You feel like he took it for granted? Yeah, just probably overspun it a little bit sometimes, Margaret, when you know you're spinning it around the angles, the speed yeah. that you play the shot too. Definitely. Good containing shot, that one from Martin Digg. Yeah, it was very smart. Oh, Shane decided to go offensive and play the kick, uh, play the bank shot. And he's going to pay the price for it, I believe. It was funny walking to this match. I was in the hallway with Mark White. He was heading over to table one, I was heading to table two, and mm -hmm. Martin Dag was right in behind us and just kind of slapped me on the back, <laughs> walking down. And uh, he didn't strike me in any way, shape, or form like someone who was going to be coming into a match against Van Boning and intimidated in any way. But you know, in the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who your opponent is. Like, as long as you give 100% in every single shot and you, it's really you against you. Yeah. Who cares who's sitting at the yeah. chair? If You're you give this person chance to get out, then it's on you. No, very true, Margaret, very true. You're your own worst enemy. Yeah. A mm -hmm. lot of top players know that. That's why they practice so many hours and yeah, play absolutely. a lot on their own. <coughs> Martin has definitely wrested momentum away from Shane at two apiece, and he's breaking in rack number five. Again, a race to eight. 
$250,000 total purse, $60,000 up top to the winner and $40,000 to the eventual runner-up. So it's a pretty good week's work. Oh, absolutely. I'm actually really curious to see who is going to lift the trophy by the end of the week because there's so many good players. The competition grew so much for the last two years. Like, it's just everywhere you see, everywhere you look, you see such a high level of pull. Yeah, dry break. It was a good, good white ball. Kept that white part in the middle of the table. Yeah, he actually hit it perfect. Fortunate for him, I don't think Shane can, make, uh, Shane can make the one ball. It looks like the four ball is blocking the pocket. Uh, maybe not. Actually, looks like it goes. Yep. It did go. He did a little bit too soft. Wanted to play it on the bottom right corner. Yep. He's obviously unhappy. <laughs> with the position of the cue ball where it ended up. That's the reason he knew he had to take the cue ball into the three and he had to judge it perfectly and he didn't. You can see, you can hear some break, background noise. The teams are playing. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of excitement going on. <coughs> now Shane's trying to figure out the solution. I wonder if you try to hook the white ball behind the five. I would just play it simple like this, playing the three ball. I like it, actually. Trying to use the 10 in the middle of the table as a blocker. Mm -hmm. But still, it's a, it's a very difficult safety for Martin right now. Because he can, I believe he can only see the right side of the three ball. And if he tries to go two rails up table. I believe the seven ball is on the way. So there is a big risk to sell out in the shot. So he really has to judge the path of the cue ball. He's going for bank. Must be able to catch the left end as he left side of this three as he looks. It looks like it, yeah. Wow, perfectly made. Beautiful shot. Gonna have to dial long distance on the four as well, but a great bank shot on the three. Yeah, and look at the cue ball. It's good that he didn't get hooked behind the nine. It was a risk to do so. Look Watch out. out. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at this. Look at Shane's face. Shane is like, I can't believe you got that lucky. Great shot. He's done well. Yeah. I mean, remember, this is from Shane's safety. Yeah. You know, it really depends how you feel at this moment. Like sometimes you feel like more offensive. Sometimes you feel like you want to play safety instead of going for a bank. It's personal preference. I wouldn't say there is a right or wrong shot. It really depends how you feel at this moment. Nice shot. Cut the seven a little bit thick, but it still went in. Well, 
Could have got a little bit closer to this nine. I agree with you, but. Still expect him yeah. to get it, don't you? Absolutely. From what I've seen so far, it looks like he's a very solid player and he has a good cue ball control and good execution. So I do expect him to make this ball. Good shot, nicely done. I believe he played the shape for the side, but I'm not sure if he decides to go for it or make it in the corner. It's a, you know, it's just a choice. I, I would still go for the side. I think he has a, yeah, he has a pretty good angle. Nice shot. He's not missing much. He's won the last three racks on the trot. He finally he got the lead. Erased a 2 nothing deficit. He's 3-2 ahead and breaking. And I'll tell you, if you have a look at Mr. Van Boning in his chair right now, he doesn't exactly exude positive body language. He's slumped down and it doesn't look like a guy that's dying to get back to the table, does it? <laughs> yeah, I would agree with you. But, you know, if you watch Shane, he often has this body language at the chair. He's very real, you know, he's not like robotic or trying to hide his emotions. He lets everybody know what he's feeling and when he's frustrated or angry or doesn't feel good about the match. But you know, it's only three to two. It's just the beginning of the match. Uh, race to eight is a pretty long race. So I'm pretty sure that he's gonna have more chances to get to the table. I think he's more upset about missing that eight ball he wasn't supposed to miss. You know, when you reach a certain level like this, you you always want to play perfect, but unfortunately, that's very hard to hard to do consistently. And Martin Martin capable too. He's got a good break. I mean, he could string a rack or two together and really put Shane under pressure, much like Shane's first round match that he ended up escaping, but. He was well behind to Daniel Gutenberger. Ended up winning 8-6. Martin Degg, comfortable winner over fellow Canadian Randy Bago. Three balls down, wow. That's a solid break. Probably happy the cue ball stayed on yeah, the table absolutely. too. Yeah, absolutely. I was just about to mention he almost lost the cue ball. It's not easy here. Even though he made the three balls, but it is, it's a very tough layout. <coughs> I mean, it, He's obviously looking at going for the one ball and go for a thin cut. But the question is, how is he going to get position for the two? Wow, that was a phenomenal shot. He played it with outside spin to actually go into the two. So he wanted to bump it, but he ended up making it. And he got rewarded. Look at that. He has a good shape on the three and the opportunity to get another wreck from Shane. A little bit like a gymnastics routine <laughs> in yeah. the process. Definitely. Well, he's always been pretty animated and ultra competitive. The speed looks good. I think he's pretty straight on the four. I wonder if he decides to draw back a little bit for the corner or just um, follow it in and play the six in the side pocket. Both options are available. Yeah, just a simple draw and looks perfect. He's straight on the six.
now once again he's faced with a dilemma whether he wants to just stop it play the eight in the corner draw it back for the side draw it back for the corner there's there's a lot of different options you know when the ball is like this in the middle of the table like the eight it really depends what you're comfortable with nicely done honestly the shot the shot on the one ball was phenomenal Well, that's four in a row and counting. 4-2, Martin Degg. And Shane with a lot to think about. Again, familiar territory for him. This is just what he encountered in his opener. Can't go to the well too often. Uh, Martin, a very worthy worthy opponent, and as I had mentioned earlier, Shane will know Martin. They've played a few times up in Canada. Number seven, and the French Canadian has assumed command of, command of this match. Right, no friends at the table this time. might be available, offers no positional rewards to the two, so Shane will defend here. Yeah, to be honest, I think Shane is probably one of the best players in the world when it comes to safeties and kicking and just moving game. He's really good at it, but it was it was a good intention, but I believe he, he left pretty easy kick shot. Great shot, look at this. Beautifully played. Looks like he's winning the crowd a little bit, right? In the beginning it seemed like everybody was rooting for Shane, but now it turned around a little. Yeah, he's showing a lot of heart, a lot of talent. Oh. Well, that was pretty obvious that he were to cut the four ball don't you think well one thing the two and the three at the top end of the table Margaret are dictating what's going on with this one there's just no value in going after it yeah absolutely not it's interesting one one thing about being as famous as Shane is of course everybody is rooting for him but on the other hand, there's a lot of people who want to see him lose because he's winning all the time. So people get excited when players like this start losing and they start rooting for his opponent. A lot of people like an underdog. Yep, absolutely. It's just always a great story. Yeah, there's really no value of trying to make the one because there's nothing good can come out of it. Chance for the 1-5 here. And you'd like to leave a nice angle to get that cue ball up towards the two and the three. Mm 
I believe he's straight in. He's yeah. not going to be very happy with this. That's not it. Well, now what he can do is he can try to send the cue ball somewhere towards where the nine ball is or towards the center of the table and play a safe off the two ball. You now try to put the cue ball behind the seven. Call the extension to give himself a little bit more time to think. Great shot. Very smart. I love doing commentary in matches like this where there's a lot of safety battles because you, you just learn a lot from just watching it. Yeah, when you've got the best seat in the house and you're watching all the best players in the world, and especially when you've got a, an understanding of what it takes to execute these shots, Margaret, you do learn, don't you? Absolutely. Probably one of the one of my favorite players to learn from is Alex Pagulain when it comes to safeties and kick and he's just he's so creative. It's it's unbelievable. It's beautiful well, to watch. Alex one of the best one pocket players in the world, so you know he understands what it means to have a tactical side of the game and he is one of the best. Absolutely. He proved it yesterday in his big win over Victor Zelinsky. Yeah. Two-time winner of the Las Vegas Open. Alex just owned that match from the outset. Yeah. Yeah, I was watching it. He didn't give Victor much chances, to be honest. This is a very good shot from Van Boning on two counts. One, a lock-up safety, and he's dislodged the two and the three. So not easy to get this one safe. Yeah. That's if he hits it. I believe no matter what he does, he's going to separate the balls. Oh, he missed the one. I, I believe he hit the three ball first. Oh, he did hit so the three now, first yeah, for sure. Yeah, now Shane has ball in hand. Like I said, that... It looks I'm like he was trying to spin the cue ball. He played with a lot of right spin. It looked like it. Well, Van Boning needs this rack to stop the bleeding. The nine looks like it goes to the corner pocket, just opposite ten. Mm -hmm. That's assuming the nine ten are in a combination, which they could could well be. Is it really Shane depends. Looks at this. Yeah, it really depends on the angle he gets for the eight. He can rather play the combination or go for the nine. He's got the angle to drop right behind the nine, bottom right. Yeah, the one thing that you can do for sure is to give up the ball in hand to Shane. This is just unforgiving mistake. And with this 10 ball, Shane is slowly coming back. And the score is four to three. That was a huge rack and Van Boning had to have it. Couldn't let Martin Digg get any further ahead. Four, three, and he's got the break in rack number eight. And speaking of breaks, we're gonna take a short one right now.
It's round two, winner side action, Shane Van Boning. South Dakota kid up against Martin Daig from Quebec City in Canada. And yet another dry break from Van Boning. The break has not been a weapon to a man who has one of the biggest breaks in the game of pool. Yeah, but to be fair, with this format, it's really hard to have advantage, you know, when you have a big break uh, because uh, with a referee rack in the triangle, you know, everything, anything can happen. So, like, you have no control over the rack. And it is very hard to make the ball in the break. So, as a lot of pros uh, mentioned in their recent interviews, it pretty much turned into a safety game instead of a running out game. Because there is no easy like break and run, break and run type of thing like it used to be with a template track. The triangle completely changes the structure of the game. Good shot there from Martin Degg back in perfect line. To be honest, as long as he gets a good shape for the four to draw back for the five, or stand across two rails. I don't see any other problems on the table. Well, it looks like he had an anxious moment there. Just cut that one a little thick, went in easy enough, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing about the new cloth. You know, it still has a slide. So as long as you're hitting the ball not very firm, it's gonna go in off the long rail. Good speed control here. Perfect control again, right side, nice angle. Get the cue ball nice and close to that eight. I love that. He is doing the business here. And could well. It looks like five to three to me. Well, this would be one of the shock results of the tournament, no doubt about it. For 5-3. Very nicely done. Yeah, the dry break from Shane Van Boning and Martin Daig never looked like he was putting a foot wrong in that clearance. Textbook from start to finish. I think Shane, because they had played before, he knew this wasn't going to be one of those matches you just show up and the expectations are high as they always are with Shane. But he knew he was gonna have to play in this and things just haven't gone quite according to plan. I think that eight ball that Shane missed was very, very important because he really let Martin to get more table time, to get more comfortable at the table and kind of gain a little bit confidence, you know, and now, look, he is 5-3 ahead and we'll see how it goes from there.
He's been breaking really well so far. Except this one probably jinxed him. I don't believe he's left a shot of the one, but... I don't think he did. I wonder if Shin decides to go for it. Or he would play it safe. <laughs> I remind you that players have 60 seconds after the break to think a little bit more about the position, to see the situation at the table. Hmm. Yeah, he's going for it. Beautiful shot. Well, that's the best shot Van Boning's played for me. Yep, absolutely agree with you. There haven't been many, but he had to spin that with a lot of inside yeah. spin to get the cue ball and miss contacting the three. Drop perfectly onto the two. A highlight shot for Van Boning. That looked like he almost missed the three. Here's the shot though, Margaret. He's got to get from the four, back down for the five. A lot of backspin, three rails. One, two, three. Perfect. Another superb Great speed shot. speed control. This is where it's very important to have good fundamentals, just to be able to let the stroke out. shot by Shane. Of course, he would prefer to have a slight angle on the six ball. He's way too straight, so now he's going to either follow it a little bit or just play a simple stop shot. Yep, just keep it simple. Oh, this is actually the second shot that he missed that, like, we couldn't even predict he would do that. The eight ball and the seven ball. And to be honest with you, you cannot afford mistakes like this when you play an opponent like Martin. Because he can punish you for that. I think this is crunch time. If Martin Degg secures these last four balls and a 6-3 advantage. Yeah, because it, it's a very dangerous scoreline, like this 5-3 race to eight, because look, he's going to run out here, right? Like most, most of the time. And then he's breaking. So a good break is going to put him on the hill. And 6-3 versus 5-4 is a huge score difference. Taking advantage of Shane's mistake and extending his lead. Yeah, unforced errors. They can be a killer in Van Boning right now. There's so many negative thoughts swirling in his head. He's a champion. Keep I'm actually success. really curious looking at Shane now, what's going through his mind. The key to success, though, you got to have a short memory. Oh, yeah, absolutely. you got to forget all those mistakes. Can't change what's happened. Yeah, you, you got to be present. That's the most important thing. Yep, got to affect what's coming. Because he's going to get a chance at the table. You just got to be ready for it. Doing some stretches. <laughs> well, 
Well, from this point, Shane effectively has to beat Martin 5 1 to win the match. This looks like a dry break for Martin. He's got a pretty decent cue ball, I have to admit, when he's breaking. He always seemed to control it very well in the center of the table. Looks like he's going for it. Oh my god, shot for nothing. He's got a roll. Can he see the two ball? No, he can't. He didn't. Uh -oh. Shane is a touch of desperation in how he's attacking now. Or resignation, take your pick. But I mean, yeah. even that shot. I feel like sometimes when you're behind, you kind of have to create an opportunity. So sometimes you have to be offensive just in order to make something good happen at the table. Ooh, this does not look good. Yeah, Shane can perk up in his chair a bit now. Yeah, that was a big mistake by Martin. If he were to take the opportunity of this rack and clear it up, he would be breaking on the hill, and then you never know. It's all about the good break from there on. Misjudged the kick shot and gave up the ball in hand to Shane, which we talked about it already. You can't, can't do it. Very unfortunate for Martin. I really wanted to see him get on the hill first and see how how, how the situation how plays. How Shane handled it? Yeah. Well, it's a very similar score line. I think it might have been 5-2 or even 6-2 against Daniel Gutenberger. Yeah, I agree with you. And Van Boning found that gear. He's hoping the history repeats itself. Nice shot for the eight. Perfect cubal control. I believe he's going to go around the 10. And play it in the top right corner. Nicely done. And Shane is taking advantage of Martin's mistake. There's a crowd that's trying to will their champion mm -hmm. on a bit. 6-4. Loud applause. And Martin Degg is taking a quick break. So we'll join it and take one as well.
Welcome back. Van Boning quickly into the rack and quickly Martin Dague out of his chair. Ball in hand. That is not the way SVB wanted to start the back end of this match. Interesting layout, to be honest with you. Can't say it's really difficult. I mean, I believe if you leave yourself a good angle on the one, <laughs> just stun it somewhere towards the middle of the table, play the two in a corner. I would say the most important is get a decent angle on the three so you can draw back for the five. You don't want to leave yourself too big of an angle for the five because where the six ball is. And then from there, Everything is pretty doable, especially for a player of higher caliber like these guys are. Looks like he's pretty straight, right? From yeah, this camera do. angle. Yeah. Straight back for the yeah. five. Draw it back. Wants a little angle here to get that cue ball off that cushion. I like this angle for the four, for the five. It's perfect. Uh oh, it was a little too hard, but he's still all right. Can cut it in the side, and. The let the cue ball travel three rails for the seven. The most important is to not get the contact with the ten because the ten can really spoil the plans for the shape of the seven. So you're going to really try to avoid the ten. Oh, what he can do, he can even go two rails, long rail, short rail with the inside spin and shape for the seven. This way you won't even be close to the 10. Oh, okay. He decides to go the other way. Kind of like short position for the seven. You know what would be really cool to have? To have like a tablet where we can draw the path of the cue ball. And Tel then it's called a telestrator. Yeah. We actually, yeah. we're gonna try and put that into the budget for you next time. Barbara. That would be yeah. amazing. And, and then so like, our viewers can see it on the screen. Sure, you can draw the lines yeah. that the cue ball can yeah. take. Mm -hmm. okay. Nice, nice little weapon to have when mm -hmm. you're doing commentary. Yeah. Believe me. Because I'm always like trying to point in the screen to figure out what they're doing. But then I realize that nobody sees that. <laughs> A little straight on this nine, so just got to get the cue ball over to the right-hand side to attack the ten. Uh, he's just letting everybody know that he's not terribly pleased with where the cue ball's finished. Well, this is a big shot for Martin Dag. Get to the hill. Yeah, very important to hit it soft. You know, you don't want to punch the ball in. Especially when you have an angle like this, he decides to get up, settle himself down a little bit. And he made it. And deposit that 10 right into the throat of the pocket. Martin Dig, come on down. This is your time, 7-4 over Shane Van Boning on center stage. Day two going to be a memorable one for this Canadian. Looking that way. A break for the last time in the match. And Van Boning now can afford no more mistakes, no more hiccups. He's going to stay unscathed in this event. He's going to have to find some form and find it fast.
The referee is making sure that the rack is perfectly frozen. Always important, you want a total displacement of the balls. Yep. So here we go, what he wouldn't give for a good break right now. He's had a few. Yeah, honestly, all you can do is to focus on the tip position, hitting the one ball square. Oh wow, that's interesting. For the first time in the match, he changes the position of the cue ball because he had several dry breaks, so decide, he decides to perform the cut break, which when you do this one from the side rail, you're looking for making the one ball in the side. But it didn't work this time for Martin, and he left the opening for Shane. Man, a great opening. Chance it? at the one. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should have left the cue ball where it was. It was interesting to see, like, the last moment he just second-guessed himself and changed the position of the cue ball for the break. But, you know, he's God told him to do that, and sometimes you just got to follow it. And to be fair, when you break in this format, when you break in from the side rail, you actually give yourself more chances to win the rag, because even if you do break dry, the position is not that wide open compared to when you break from the middle of the table. If you don't make the ball, you pretty much sell out the whole position to your opponent. I think Shane's mannerisms speak volumes right now. He has really been out of sorts in this match and due in part to as well as Martin Daig has played. I mean, there have been a lot of mistakes from Van Boning, it's fair to say, but... It's a beautiful shot. Daig has risen to the occasion. And a good shot, good containing shot, that one from Shane. But again, from a position that he feels like he should still be at the table. Well, he'll call that corner pocket. Two cushions to try and deposit that three. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, wow, he was so close to his scratch. He's going to be happy with this result for sure. Look at this. This does not look good for Shane. Well, Martin has to figure out how to get to the four. And this is pretty much the key shot of the wreck. Yeah, I see a couple fans in the background just almost looking in disbelief, Margaret. Just shaking their heads. Mm -hmm. Well, their eyes don't deceive them. They can see it unfolding right before them. He actually did really good. Yeah, if he can park that cue ball roughly where the four is now, it's going to be ideal on the five. Yeah, I agree. It looks like he's pretty straight on the four to me from this camera angle. Yeah. Just a soft stop shot. Uh oh. Well, there was some body movement there. Yeah. It got him this time. He was up off the queue way too early there. Yeah. See, see, that's the thing, like, we were talking about this, like, perfect fundamentals earlier, and the thing is, you can play a really high-level pool, you know, with, like, a little jab or stroke, or, like, getting up and moving up and down on the ball, but when it comes to high-pressure situation, when you get excited, that's where good fundamentals really play a role, because it allows you to settle down and perform the shot even under the high pressure. Yeah, he was a little fortunate to get it safe. And I agree, Shane definitely. puts his hand in his pocket as he walks back to the chair. 
Sometimes you just have to take your medicine. Nothing much he could do here, honestly. To slow roll the four, because obviously the five ball didn't go in the top right, so he had to play in the bottom right corner. It's fascinating to me that he was actually able to spin the four ball on such a long distance. At that speed? Yeah. Honestly, I would I would personally play it simple, just top spin. But, you know, because of this right-hand English, he was able to create a better angle for himself. There's another shot, imperative that he stays still. Yeah. Stunned across the table for the seven. Well done. I can see he's feeling it for sure right now. He's four balls away of beating arguably one of the best players in the world on the TV table in front of a huge crowd. And this is exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> oh my oh. God. Drama. What kept that ball on the table? It's not over yet. Yeah, just Shane. It just doesn't doesn't look like anything is going right at all for Shane right now. Fighting it. Yeah, he still was able to manage it. Great shot by Shane. That was a miracle for him to be able to even <laughs> come back to the table. Yeah, Absolute miracle. The fans, they're not ready to go home just yet. But Martin Degg has to feel that he had one foot over the finish line. He just had to drag himself over. But look at that miss. Uh -huh. How did that stay on the table, he's asking himself. And you want the picture of a suffering man? You just saw it. And Shane Van Boning, it's life after death. the chance now to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And how difficult will it be for Martin Degg? Will he get another chance? Will he get another one as good as the one he just threw away? And is Shane that much stronger because he feels he's playing a man? Just can't quite can't quite get over the finish line. So many storylines. And Van Boning still can't buy a ball. Well, he got one off the break this time, and the, actually this looks pretty good. I was looking for a ball. Ah, there it is, the three in the top corner. I didn't see anything go down, but he landed nicely on the one. I thought, oh, the same storyline, but no, a chance for Van Boning. But I'll tell you one thing, when you're parked in your chair, Martin Degg right now, with every ball that Van Boning makes, he gets closer to overcoming that lead. It is going to be difficult for Martin Degg to swallow. His mouth is going to taste like sandpaper. Absolutely. I don't know how about you, but I do believe in pool guides. And I feel like sometimes when you miss the opportunity to close up the match, it seems like everything's going against you after that. It's like. It's almost like pool gods are punishing you for not using your opportunity to finish the wreck. 
You see Martin Digg leaning over right behind Shane Van Boning's cue. Doesn't look like an ideal angle for the eight. It looks like he's like a little bit too straight. Oh, he, he's all right. It's good that he used his extension so he can actually reach balls like this. Go on to rails. Well, Margaret, I hope you've buckled in because this roller coaster ride isn't over yet. Absolutely. 7 6. And you start to feel like this one is going to go right down to the last ball. Like you said, you got to have a short memory, and Martin, I hope that he does because this mistake. It can eat you alive from the inside, you know. Just hope he doesn't allow it to mentally break him. He looks pretty calm. Yeah, he's just had <laughs> a big chunk of chocolate. Mm-hmm. You know, something to take his mind off recent events. Yeah, you know, just focus on presents and chewing on something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... One of the tricks that you can use for sure. You know, like, take your thoughts away from what just happened. Shane would love to have an instant replay of the break he just had. And he might have just got it. Yeah. He's taken a lot of power off the break, Margaret, not even close to as hard as Van Boning can hit them. And he's found the measure of the table. Yeah. You know, it's all about adapting to different conditions. Best players in the world can adapt the best. So they will, they eventually figured it out. The nine ball is kind of tricky. Do you think you would try to bump the nine right now? Going from six to the seven? I'd be taking that cue ball awful close to that side pocket. Yeah. No, he's not going to go for it, according to his tip position. I'm actually very curious what's going through his mind and how he is going to solve this situation. Does the eight ball go off the nine in the side? The nine ball looks a little too far from the side pocket. Oh, okay. Keeping it simple, I guess. He's gotta be careful here. Yeah, yeah he's not sure about that. He knows it too. Mm -hmm. This it is, is tricky. Very, very tricky. Beautiful shot. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Oh, they will if he gets to 7-7. Seven, seven. And he has. Well, 7-7, seven, seven, Margaret. I don't think many would have predicted that score. It's getting more and more interesting, that's for sure. He's won the last three in a row. And now, one more good break. He doesn't want to sit down now, does he? Definitely it's not. All in front of him. And you talk about an escape, a great escape. For the second time already. The first match was very similar situation. He was like six to three down, I believe. And then he just he used a few opponents' mistakes in his advantage and managed to 
come back and then beat the guy 8-6, I believe. Yeah. Nicely done. He put a lot of power into this one. The mentality is when it doesn't go my way, I'm just going to hit it hard and pray for some balls to find the way to the pockets. Because to be honest with you, when it is a referee rack with a triangle format, there's not everything in your control. And sometimes you hit them perfect and you still don't make a ball, right? So you can't really control which balls you're going to make. So you have to hit it hard and just pray for some something good to happen. One thing's for certain, it looks like Daig is gonna get out of his chair. That wasn't Shane's best positional shot unless he's gonna try and flick this in off the side cushion, which is a possibility. Yeah, Shane is using a nice aiming system to kind of like mirror the distance between the ball and the rail. He's gonna call the two ball. High risk, high reward. That's actually a good shot because even if you miss it, Beautiful shot. Even if you miss this ball, you're still going to leave a safety option. Well, I take it back. I said that Dag was going to be getting out of his chair. Maybe mm -hmm. not. It all depends on this one shot from three to the four. Well, four eight combination possible. Um, Certainly the safety. A very real possibility. Yeah, I think he will be able to stick him behind the eight if he decides to play safe. Just roll the four ball forward. Is he really going to go offensive in this situation? But, you know, who am I to judge? Yeah, this is exactly the shot I was thinking about. Well, it's been a while since Martin Degg has come to the table. And he's welcomed the total eclipse. So he's going to have to negotiate this escape. Yeah, in this one, it's always good to go to a rails instead of one because there's so much more good things that come out, can come out of it. And if you go two rails, you can actually get a shape for the next ball, which is six. Let's see what he left. Oh, wow, you can see him slamming his cue. He's obviously upset. Left the opening for Shane, and he knows that Shane for sure is going to use it. Uh oh. Wow, to be honest, like his bridge was very awkwardly short. When he was bridging off the rail, it was way too short. A very different look for him. Yeah. For sure. He usually uses a long bridge almost all the time. So I feel like he he was just almost like uncomfortable in the shot. Well, Martin definitely got his shot again, and it was a beautiful kick shot with a perfect control. Couldn't do any better. Yeah, everybody, it's white knuckle time out there. These are very tense moments if you're a Van Boning fan. I would call the 10 in the side just in case. Yeah, this is a chance, another chance for Martin Dag to seal the deal. It is not easy, but it is doable. Pretty good speed. He would probably prefer the cue will to roll a little bit further, but you know, that will do. 
now just really stay present and focus on making the six. And stay still. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh my goodness. It did look like he missed it. <laughs> I see, that's the thing, like, if you go into the rail with the new claws on a wider angle, as long as you don't jab at the ball, it's going to go in. Ooh, that can get really tricky. Look at Shane. <laughs> I think he, he knows that he still might have a chance. Natural angle is going to take this cue ball over to the other side. Yeah, so he's playing with low outside. Oh, God, I really don't like the shots on the new cloth. Nope. This one is not going to go in. Look at all the people's reaction. Oh, my God. He really did let Shane to get away with it twice. He's going to feel horrible. The pillow will feel like a brick tonight. When Martin oh, hits yeah. it. I bet. Well. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> nice face, Shane. <laughs> well, now you have to go for the bank. No, I honestly, he crushed it. He absolutely crushed it. And there is like, I can't even <laughs> look for an excuse. <laughs> Let you know how they feel. An escape act that Houdini would have been proud of. Shane Van Boning, an 8 7 winner over Martin Dag. Tough lines for the Canadian. Well done to Van Boning. And Margaret, that was quite one to commentate that on, was, wasn't it? That was unbelievable. That was so exciting. And I hope you guys enjoy it just as much as we did. Well, it was a lot of fun, folks. We're going to be back with a lot more action. But for Margaret, I'm Jim. We'll be talking to you again soon. See you later.